Today, we're going to be showcasing the deck that got me to Diamond. Um, it is a Bant list that is going to be focusing heavily on creature drops and uh, going extremely wide. Uh, the build around here in today's deck with these two specific cards of the Defiler of Vigor and the Silverback Elder. If you guys don't know, the Elder is going to allow us to choose from three beneficial um, choices every time a creature comes down onto the battlefield uh, to help us kind of control the pace of the game and which direction we take it. Um, and then we've got the Defiler, which every time a green permanent hits the battlefield is going to pump up the entire team with 1-1 counters uh, which is really good because the entire deck is made up of green creatures um, except for maybe one exception um, and then uh, we've got some other creatures that play into that sort of uh, scheme as well where we play it we play out something we get something in return we've got things like beast caller uh, let's see torrens cemetery protector both the torrens and cemetery protector uh, you know basically are going to be spitting out more creatures as we're casting creatures helping us go extremely wide um, beast caller is going to get extra 1-1 counters every time a creature comes down on the field so there's always this uh, this never-ending loop of we get something every time we cast something which is a lot of value and uh the deck turned out to be pretty powerful like i said we grinded to diamond fairly easily uh, there will be a full deck breakdown and analysis at the end of today's video so stick around for that in the meantime there's a link in the description below for the full deck list and if you guys enjoy content just like this don't forget the video uh to give the video a like and a subscribe both go a long way and are free ways to help support and grow the channel with that being said, guys, enjoy today's games, and we'll see you here at the end. Peace! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we have a good one for you. We're going to be playing some bands. We're going to be playing a lot of new cards in this deck, too. We've got... Uh, you know, we've got the, uh, what is it? The, uh, Silverback Elder. We've got the Defiler and we've also got a Johnny. A lot of really good new cards here. Uh, but the build around today was mostly the Silverback Elder. A very cool card that I couldn't wait to try out. Um, it's got a lot of options. Whenever creatures hit the battlefield, man, this thing's just going to keep on going off over and over again. And, uh, that's the goal of today's video. Uh, we're going to be trying to go extremely wide. You know, trying to put as many bodies on the battlefield as possible um, and just go, you know, sheer volume and try to get around the opponent's defenses. That's how this deck's going to work out today. I hope. All right, we got a Kodama coming in on three here. Kodama's a good block, so they may not attack into us, but if they do attack into us, it's fine. I think I'm actually going to allow it. But no, there's a lightning strike. Brand new removal spell from... Uh, Dominaria and that's a so it's a tough one to beat that's for sure three damage is no joke especially instant speed makes things tricky uh but what is nice is i do have the uh cemetery which i can go ahead and flash in here making a block against the harvester and then exiling my own kodama allowing me to then create tokens every time we cast a creature that's fine also, a Johnny Sleeper Agent, not bad, especially because our opponent's working off burn spells. It may be pretty relevant to uh, get my creatures bigger to avoid those burn spells. All right, we are going to, like I said, hit our own graveyard here because we don't care about our graveyard. And then also, uh, it's important to get a creature as our type because we play only creatures and we're going to be getting a lot of value off that. And the opponent hits it with a lightning strike. Bit of a bummer. But we do trade. So it's a two for one. We'll take that all day. And uh, yeah, I mean, we get right into the Silverback Elder. That seems good enough for me. And then just keep gaining life. And what's great about the Elder too is it, it actually can, you know, destroy, uh, what is it, artifacts as well as enchantments? Let me see. Uh, destroy artifact or enchantment. So we can actually keep blowing up most of their game plans here. <laughs> but uh, the opponent had other plans with the Liliana. Fair enough. All right. Um, Part of me wants to go with Johnny, but that seems like it'd be a pretty silly game plan, to be honest. All right, let's go with the uh, Torrens. We're going to go wide here. Going to go wide here. Hopefully the opponent doesn't have some sort of meat hook massacre effect because that would be pretty bad. We could give all of the 1-1 one, one counters that a Johnny would give us onto one creature like the Beast Caller. And then, um, you know, these other creatures would train. So hopefully avoiding a lot of what they're trying to do here of like meat hooking the board and stuff like that. So 
Nice. They show us their entire hand. We love that. But that means Liliana's going to plus, of course, because why not? So it's totally okay, though. A Johnny will uh, get us a lot of card advantage down the line. Would be nice to get my board vigilance, though, you know? It's a good find. It's a good find, but I do have to go with a Johnny. Have to do it. I have to go with Johnny here. A Johnny's minus three is just too good. I'm going to go here and here. I'm going to put two here. There we go. That'll at least kill Liliana for sure. And all of our creatures get trained and I get two blockers on the return, which means a Johnny should be protected pretty well. All right. Are you, are you losing game audio? Interesting. That's my cue to leave. All right. They can discard this card if it's no good. They're thinking about it. It must be on the cusp of good and bad, which is good for us. It means it's not like a, a an invoke despair or something. Invoke Despair, though, would actually be a card you'd want to throw away because of uh, the mana base you currently have. Ah, pretty cool card. Pretty cool card. Not bad. A Johnny is almost guaranteed to hit us something on the plus almost every time, by the way. I'm hoping that uh, that's going to be the case this time around. Let's see, and it hits. It's an Ajani. Love it. Love it. All right, Torrens is going to kick off. Creates another 1-1. One, one. And now, I mean, we're just going to start running away with the game, I think. Um, what do we want to do here? This does train to a 5-5 five, five if we attack into them. You know, it's 10 damage. There's nothing to uh, shake a stick at. We have great blockers on the return. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. We only got 11 life total, but I think it's totally fine. We drop a Gala Greeters next turn, and that can start gaining us life, as well as the Elder gaining us life every time a creature hits the field. Um, Let's do this. Bada bing, bada boom. We get the 1-1 counters placed over on something else, which is fantastic. All right. The Elder now definitely avoids any sort of Meat Hook Massacre effect, and it avoids any burn spell, so... We're feeling pretty good about this. Looks like they're going to probably fly or bring this tenacious underdog in with the blitz. They're probably going to just send it with, you know, the zombie token as well. Which is pretty good because it's going to force me to block with the one one, which I don't want to do. I didn't necessarily need to do that because I did have another Ajani, but I didn't want to waste my mana playing the second Ajani here. That's not bad. Let's see what we hit here with the Ajani off the top. A land. Oh. Not good. Four life, please. And we play this out as a land because we can't really bounce anything with it. And then we go second Ajani here. Uh, yeah, like so. There we go. Second, a Johnny comes down, and then we're gonna go ahead and minus this one, giving vigilance. There is a place for all of you beside us. Let's do it like that. That seems good. That seems good. And then uh, just send these two through. This is gonna train. It has vigilance as well. We can block on the way back. This is good stuff. We're looking at uh, way more than lethal, so they're going to have to make some blocks here with either the Kiki Jiki or the Jadar. They lose the Kiki Jiki, which is interesting. I think that's a much better card than Jadar, if I'm being honest. Jadar keeps spitting out 2-2 zombies for you, but those zombies can't block, which is honestly the more important thing here. In my opinion, of course. In my opinion, ain't worth anything. Blood token! Desperation. We love it. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, couple couple of uh, creatures coming down. One of them with death touch. Pretty annoying. All right, and it does have decay. They spit out another one. Da da da. Ooh, okay, that's gonna be the answer to all of our problems. Let's do it now because I don't want to take any more life. 
Don't want to take any more life than I have to here. Not bad. Every day, more rally. And there's the scoop. And uh, the one one would have trained as well, so I would have swung him with that as well. But uh, very good first game, man. I knew this deck was going to be powerful. I'm going to go ahead and reset the uh, the system here, but uh, we'll get on to the next one. All right, solid first game. Went ahead and reset the uh, you know the client for the audio issues. And hopefully we can keep this uh, train running, man. Uh, it's a like I said, this this deck feels pretty powerful. I'm not gonna lie. A Johnny was a late addition to the deck. And uh, it came through clutch in that last game, that's for sure. I get to go first. Pretty solid starting hand. This is looking pretty good. Uh, but yeah, the Johnny was a late addition. I had a Wandering Emperor in its place for a little while, which was not the play. Um, oh, what a find. What a find off the top. We get ourselves a Kodama, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Opponent is on Naya, which means they're probably going to go wide just like we are. Oh, it's five color. Okay. Okay. We don't mind that play, though, because it is going to open up uh, a little bit of ramp here for us with the Kodama play. Kodama plus Gala Greeters equals gas. Olin. Straight fire, man. Let's go. Get in there for two. They block one. That's all they can do. We get a land. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. We definitely need more green. Double green and triple green here. So we're going to need at least one more. Uh, next turn, we could drop a Falco if we feel. Or maybe... Or maybe even a Defiler if we find another land. Potentially even... A, yeah, we can pretty much play our entire hand out here. Whatever one we want. It's going to be our choice if we hit another land. We do not. Okay, that's fine. Falco, I think, is the play here. Is it the play? Is Falco the play? I think it is, right? I mean... Yeah. I believe so. And just in case they're up to some shenanigans, which I have a feeling they are, if they blow up the Gala Greeters... I'm going to use the Gala Greeters this time around to create a treasure. Nice, they do. All right, that solves that. That solves that mystery. All right, our next card off the top is going to be a Torrens. That's what I love about the Falco is it's like an unlimited scrying effect. Uh, looks like they might have something. Something for one. All right, so I'm glad I got the treasure because we can now play the Silverback Elder, which is a big body here. That's a 5-5 five, five flyer. Yikes. Other dragons you control have Ward 2. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature, a planeswalker, and opponent controls has dealt excess damage this turn. Okay, that's fine, I guess. It's not ideal, but it's, it's going to be okay, I think. Let's go with... Oh, man. Part of me wants to go with the Defiler first, so we, so we can... Uh, Pump up the squad a little bit here. Yeah, I think that the Filer is actually the play here. No attacks. Say go. 5-5 five, five Flying Dragon here in our way. That's just kind of being a nuisance. So I think they're going to be pretty heavy on the uh, burn mechanics, maybe? I don't know. Excess damage. If a creature, planeswalker, and opponent controls was dealt excess damage this turn. Yeah, we don't want to do that then. No blocks. No blocks. It would have just definitely created another dragon, which we can't really can't really have right now. Alright. What do we do though? I think this is the move, right? Yeah, use the treasure. It's fine. No need to take any excess damage here. The rest of the team gets a little bit of a pump here. They have one mana that they can use for something, man. And it's holding priority. They had this earlier, too. What could it possibly be, though? What could the one mana possibly be for? I don't know. 
I don't know. I think the life gain here might be pretty relevant. Um, the elder's also going to be gaining us life every time something enters the field. So we're going to be fine um, as long as, you know, neither one of those gets removed. But uh, Defiler can get through and actually get some serious damage in and uh, maybe take some stuff out. I'm okay trading this with any other uh, bigger creatures. So if you want to make a block, let's do it. That's fine. Jetmere can get out of hand really fast. So I'm happy to take it out happily take it out now the falco is not going to be able to get big enough though to oh wow okay that's pretty brutal i can't lie the tamio safekeeping that got me pretty good oh man that's not good at all man that's really bad all right so those count as modified now oh man talk about a brutal turn of events the opponent just found everything they needed there i am going to kill you though All right. I go Gala Greeters first. Another Gala Greeters. Probably one one counters. And no attacks just yet. We get another land next turn. I do have some draw mechanics here with the uh, clue tokens on the field. I did actually get just destroyed those last couple of turns with a simple Tamiyo safekeeping. So I'm in a bit of a bind here, to be honest. But I am gaining four life a turn with the uh, Gala Greeter. So hopefully uh, we win this race if we want to keep exchanging blow for blow here. So looks like uh, maybe we'll go with the protect their first just so we can exile one of their creatures and then we can get more value out of it with the uh, beast caller coming down because then we can create more bodies so these are going to get all three triggers this turn no doubt about it cemetery protector hits we gain our life and we steal jet mirror all right we're still in the driver's seat it looks like i'm gonna go with this actually we know it's on top of our deck we don't need that this turn treasures treasures all right we're still we're still doing good like i said we're still driving this train let's go attack in here dealing a lot of damage see if they want to give up the kodama or not i doubt that they're going to want to no they do maybe they have a burn spell or something like that no gala greeter still sticks on the field huh well, we've gone extremely wide, but I'm really afraid of obvious uh, sweeper effects. But I, I'm just I'm pretty confident they, they're not running something like that because it, it wouldn't really make sense to the style of deck that they're playing. Let's see what we got here off the top. We know what's coming. So another Falco. Ugh. Come on, something good on the top here and land. Gosh, darn it. Gosh, darn. I mean, is this enough damage? They block one of these. They kill the Falco. We play another Falco after would be pretty cool. Um, and then we deal how much damage? Let's just say the worst case scenario. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yeah, we got plenty. We got plenty. I'm sorry. I, would, I don't even know what I was thinking about there. I was thinking about what I would do if what, uh, you know, I was trying to figure out which creature they would block when really all I had to do is just count up the damage. We have plenty of damage to close this game out aside, you know, from any sort of crazy removal tactics that they may have or whatever. Uh, we should be able to close this out pretty easily. There we go. All right, cool. That was a close one, though. That Tamiyo safekeeping absolutely destroyed us, followed by a removal spell. That was brutal. All right. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Ah, man. So me and my wife have this new spot that we hit up every single week. Well, not every week, but pretty close to because it's my new favorite food. It's my favorite spot of all time. Uh, we found this Korean barbecue place. I'm sure a lot of you might have it around you because it's a chain. I think it's mana mana barbecue. It's a Korean barbecue spot, man. And I cannot get enough of it, man. It is my absolute favorite 
of all time. I go there, man. We went there. We went there today, and I, my stomach is still so full. It's like all you can eat meats, and I get the ramen. Oh, it's so good, so good. I just felt like I had to share that with you guys. All right, so we got a one three in front of us here. It says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may tap two untapped creatures you control. If you do, draw a card. Did you control get one one in vigilance to the end of turn? Okay. I'm gonna just go big. I don't see a Kodama here, so well, even if I did see a Kodama, this is probably gonna be the play we would have made anyways. Gotta get this beast caller huge. Broker's charm is nice. I like having that in hand. It's a lot of options at the fingertips here. So this thing draws them cards if they tap two creatures. All right, let's go Gala. Start spinning out some treasures with the Gala Greeters because the treasures are going to be really good to get the Titan of Industry in play. I didn't expect to draw into our second one there off the top. We only have two in the deck, so. Void Rend. Yikes. All right, well, they do draw a card off of that. That's their main phase play. I get the counter over here. I'll take that. That wasn't terrible. That wasn't the worst thing ever. Um, I don't want them drawing any more cards. Mm, actually, what's more valuable here? I think this might be more valuable. I think this might actually be more valuable in the long run. All right, let's hope for the best here off the top of our deck. We need at least a, a creature that's playable or a land so we can work our way towards the Defiler here. Defiler will make the uh, industry a little bit cheaper too. Sunset Revelry just to draw a card and gain four, huh? Nice. We get the Defiler down. Now we're talking. One, two, three, four, five. This will give me a six uh, land drop. This will be our seventh. Boom. We got the Titan in next turn. They're in trouble, but I do, I, you know, they do have white sources. So, uh, and black, white and black sources, which means we have to watch out for exiling and destroy type creature of, uh, effects here. So wandering emperor is something we don't want to walk into. These lands are kind of cool. I can't lie. They're pretty cool. Hits the defiler for six here. Wow. I got to kill this thing. This thing is just being an, uh, really annoying. Honestly. All right. We still get to tighten down, which is great. But now that we know that they're they're working with the march here, it's totally fine. Um, it's not going to kill us as long as we have a shield counter on. So let's do this. Let's do this. And this seems fine. Start putting some pressure on them here because we can't let this little 1-3 just rule the game here. I'm surprised at how much value they've been able to get off of it um, in this game. So going to have to do something about it. All right. Do we go Torrens and then Broker's Charm or do we go another Titan of Industry? I think we go Torrens, Broker's Charm. Um, 1-1 one, one counter, right? <laughs> Trying to get aggressive here. Trying to switch the gears up. Get aggressive. Hmm. Well, they can block these with this. Yeah, let's see what happens here. All right, they just go there. I trample right over, but I do break my shield counter. That's fine. That's fine. I do want to break their shield counter because I don't want them drawing any more cards off of that. But at the same time, I kind of want to kill this because if they play another instant sorcery speed spell, uh, I don't know what the choice. I don't know what the play is here, but it is to kill something for sure. It's to kill this, I think. Because this is endless card draw over and over again. This is just card draw once and they're good to go. And I don't really care if it attacks me. It is what it is. I have a second one, of course. Of course. And then they memory deluge too. So they're drawing a lot of cards this turn. They basically refilled their entire hand here. Let's hope that they don't have any sweepers in the deck. That would be a bit unfortunate. Um, I mean, what do we do here? 
I have to kill that sanctuary warden, man. It's just such a nuisance. I think we just keep, I think we just keep attacking in, man. Keep going strong. Yeah, just get aggressive, man. Let's just get aggressive. If they block, you know, the gala, so be it. It, it loses the shield counter. I think it's fine. I think we have to get aggressive, stay aggressive. End our turn. There's a good chance the sweeper comes down this turn. And if it does, we have backup, you know, really good backup spells here. So go ahead and play your meat hook massacre or whatever it is you got to do. Really? That's your play, huh? That's fine. That's fine. I thought it would be a sweeper for sure. Kaito, yeah, I didn't expect that. I'm not gonna lie. I thought for sure that we'd be seeing a sweeper here. They create a ninja? Maybe just to block with or what? All right, well, if they're gonna play that route, I gotta get a little more aggressive, unfortunately. Man, I just thought for sure we'd be seeing a sweeper here and I thought holding back would be the, the right move. But no, they want to be lame, huh? All right, see how they block. They kill the Titan, but they lose their Warden. I love that. All right, let's hope for no Sweeper this time. I mean, again, they're they're in the realm of Sweeper territory and there is none, which is, which is interesting. You would think in a deck that's Esper running a lot of instant sorcery spells, you'd see a Sweeper come down. I was very confused on that. Uh, that game, I'm not gonna lie, but it looks like more of a mid-range maybe type of a deck where they generate a ton of tokens and they focus more on just spot removal and trying to go wider than the opponent. Um, so it worked out, but uh, on to the next. All right, I mean, that was a weird game, I can't lie. I thought we were in a bit of trouble there, to be honest, when uh, we when we failed to, to notice the, you know, we weren't getting hit with the sweeper, but it panned out. And that was a mulligan for sure. This though, honestly, this isn't ideal either. The mana is a little wonky, not being able to play on turn two. So hopefully we top deck uh, an on tap land, but um, yeah, this isn't great. Second Torrens, oh brother. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Two Defilers, two Torrens. Mana's weird. Unbelievable. It is what it is. I was hoping to hoping to keep this run alive so we can uh, so we can look at maybe getting to diamond, but I don't think we're gonna win this one. We're off to a little bit of a slow start, to be honest. Kind of need a lot to happen here. What do we do if they get a land here, which is what I want to see? What do we do with that mana? Do we go with the Broker's Charm, maybe? No land. No land. So do we go Gala Greeters then and then create another body? That seems like it might be the play. And do we offer the trade? Yeah, we have a second Torrens. Might as well. Might as well offer the trade if they want to take it. Cool on me. Um, I will block with the trainee, uh, but not the Gala Greeters. So I wonder how they attack here, to be honest. All right, they're definitely beating me in the uh, mana department. Torrens creates a trainee. Now all their humans now act as mana as well, which is crazy because now they got so much mana to work with. Um, you know, I'm going to take this actually. All right, that's unfortunate. All right, I think I'm going to go Broker's Charm. Do we draw into some cards, though, or do we kill their Torrens? Because I feel like their Torrens is really the only way that they're going to, you know, be able to hurt us. Dang, this is tough, man. This is tough. They're drawing cards off this, too. They're so far ahead of us. They're so far ahead of us. All right, well, kill the Torrens. Stay aggressive, maybe. Let's 
the best thing I think we can do is stay aggressive here because, uh, you know, keep the pressure on the opponent. It's going to force them, you know, to make blocks like that and then hopefully keep the game as even as possible. But this thing's going to flip over next turn. And when it does, everything gets stronger on their end. Join the dance. Yeah, every little 1-1 one, one creature that they get is just all, to, you know, that's crazy value because, again, this flips over and they become 2-2s, two which is really unfortunate for us. I need, um... I need some help from our deck for sure. I need it to produce I need it to produce us some mana. And not a triome land that's gonna troll us here. I need an actual land that's gonna help us. Oh man. Alright, Torrens again. At least we get the treasure this time around. No attacks. Uh it's just one of those games. I don't know how that's possible. Like honestly, I think about this a lot. I'm like, man. How do we have a game where we just consistently, you know, get mana like very easily and then go to a game where you get none? It feels like after three, four or five draws, you should hit at least like one. And even if you hit one, like that's like if we had hitting one more mana here, that's still a mana screw pretty bad. But we can't even hit one off of like five draws. It's crazy. It's like if you get mana screwed, it is like they make sure you know it's for real. <laughs> See what I'm saying? That's crazy. All right. Um, I mean, what do we do here? I think there's only thing, one thing we can do. Let's see what's on top of our deck. I bet it's a land because it's a little too late now, but. No, it's not a land. It's another unplayable creature, actually. Um, okay. That's actually so bad. Oh, no. I thought for sure it'd be a land. Okay. Um, well, we got the Kodama. And if I play the Kodama out, this can actually attack in. And it is modified with the shield counter. So if we hit them, we do get another land that way. Um, and we get a treasure off the Gala Greeters. And from there, our, our mana troubles are over. But, I mean, we're, they're on how many, how much mana do they have? They have, what, 10? Something like that? 11? Just, we just can't play magic right now. It's a bummer. Um, if we got down the silver back, though, I mean, with the Gala Greeters, we're looking at a, an absorbent amount of life gain every turn, which is good. But uh, can we get there is the question because, you know, these these tutus are now actual serious threats. So, you know, they're going to get a little bit more loose with their attacks now. So us actually having the chance to survive is very unlikely. They're still just sending in one Gala Greeters, which <laughs> for me, I got to say thank you to our opponent because that is not what I would do. I would, I would, I would let the, the hounds loose. <laughs> That's actually really good. It's actually super good. I'm actually going to use the treasure though, which is a bit of a bummer, but I do need a minus three here. And it's a Broker's Charm on top of the deck. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know? Why resist us? Phyrexia offers purpose for all. All right, what this is going to do, though, is going to allow us to get a little more loose with our attack this turn. Phyrexia fights as one. These both train. We're sitting at four and three, and then they all have Vigilance. Uh, Broker's Charm comes off the top. All right, we're taking some of these tokens out. I like it. Maybe that wasn't the move, though. Maybe Kodama really was the move. We'll see. Okay. They gave the safekeeping to the wrong token. Ouch. Um, our opponent's making enough mistakes that we might we might be able to scrape by somehow, but I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to let this five get through, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, if they have an answer for this Falco, like a bounce spell, we're, we're actually done, though. It looks like they have something. They highlighted it, so. 
I mean, hopefully they attack the Ajani, though. That'd be kind of cool. Take their attention off of my face for a turn. It would just be another uh, mistake, in my opinion. But I'll take it if they want to do it, to be honest. Wow, they don't have any playables, I don't think. They played that land, and it jumped right to the attack phase pretty fast. I don't think they have any more playable cards here. All right, they're sending it to the face here. Sending it all to the face, huh? All right, well, I think it's time to make a block here. We have a, we have a 1-1 one, one counter on the Falco, so we still have a modified creature. It's another Kodama on the top of the deck. All right, let's go ahead and get this Kodama down in here. Kind of crazy. Well, we know there's a Kodama on top of the deck, which is value with the Johnny, so we'll take it. Knowing that there's that's on top of the deck, we'll take it. Hey, look, it's our fourth land drop. Uh, maybe we actually just go Broker's Charm and draw into it. Yeah, let's just draw into... No. No, 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 no. I think this is... This is the move. We got another blocker. Yeah. Get another blocker down. Ensure that the land drop hits. Holy cow, ladies and gentlemen. We just hit our fourth land drop. Wow, dude. Let's go. Runic shot. Gosh darn it. Again, though, we still have a good body on the field to block with. We know another land's coming, which is fantastic. And then a Johnny can plus again, hopefully drawing us another card. Things are looking up, guys. Things are looking up. I have no idea how we're even still in this game, but we're here. We are here. It's another land. Sure. Keep it on top. Why the heck not? Looking to gain some life here. Dropping down. Uh, Yeah, well, no, we're going to only be trading with a 2-2. Not smart. Back-to-back -back Silverback Elders just gaining four life a pop is going to be so good. What the heck does this thing do, though? At the beginning of your end step, you may pay X. If you do draw X cards, X can't be greater than the amount of life you gain this turn. Okay. All right. Second silverback. Boom, boom. Gaining that life. Drawing them cards. Okay, we don't need any more lands. I never thought I'd say those words in this game, but we don't need any more lands. Yeah, send it, send it, send it, send it. Kill their 4-4 life linker. All right, they're at 7 life total. We've got a 5-7 on the field to block their 4-4. <sighs> I can't believe we did it, guys. I, I genuinely can't believe we won this game. Did I just, I'm curious to know, though, if we started out with 3 mana or not. I think we had a 3 mana hand, which was kind of awkward because wasn't they, weren't they all tap lands? Yeah, that's right. They were all tap lands. Crazy. 3 land hand and we didn't get a land until what? <laughs> what turn was that? I don't even know. One to the top, one to the bottom. Sagarda, that's a really good card, actually, though. Shoot. It's a really good card. Um, yeah, that's not... It's not good for us. We need to go ahead and give Kodama all these 1-1 one -one counters, because... Oh, wow, they're gonna... That's actually a really smart play. I do have Broker's Charm, though, so that's another way to deal with the problem at hand here. Actually, what am I doing? I could, I could actually still block, and then play the second Kodama. I mean, that's still definitely a playable. Yeah, that's a move. That's a move. That's what we'll do. That is what we'll do. Actually, <laughs> that's really good too, though. Um, one, two. Duh. Yeah, maybe it's the Falco. Falco, gain us for life, please. It's a, oh, you know what I should have done? I actually should have played this first. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. I should have played the Beast Caller first. Back to 18. Going to give all the 1-1 one -one counters to the Falco. Now it's stronger than the Sigarda. I will trade with either one of these. I'm happy to. I know we're losing out on, uh, you know, 
potentially four life gain a turn but i think being up to 18 we're we're good to go now and especially because we have broker's charm which can blow up in either one of these creatures and then we have two defilers which is so good i mean we're in really good shape here just keep the pressure on they take the five wow which means they plan on swinging in with both their creatures here yep we're, oh, just the one, huh? Okay. Okay. Ah, what a top deck. Okay. Just looking to gain some life this turn, I see. They can draw two cards. Wow, that's really good, actually. In this particular instance, that's really good. Wow. What a top deck, man. Holy... Tamiya safekeeping, huh? There's the scoop. Interesting that they scooped it up right there. They actually made a really good turn right there. And uh, again, gaining life. They might have been able to come back there. I'm surprised. Obviously, we have a great hand. You know, if they didn't have another Tamiya safekeeping to stop me from killing this, though, it was going to be a bad day for them. But all right, on to the next one. That is going to conclude today's gameplay portion of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, it was a lot of fun and it worked out extremely well and I really enjoyed myself with this one. But uh, we're going to break it down in full now for you. But before I do so, huge shout out to everyone who made it this far into the video. I do appreciate it a lot. It helps with the YouTube algorithm when you stay this long. So um, I really do appreciate you for sticking around with me and I'm glad you enjoyed the video enough to do so. Uh, with that being said, though, let's take a look at today's deck. Um, all right, so we we obviously kick things off with the Silverback Elder. I, I can't stop talking about this card. It's so powerful. I love this thing. And uh, I think when people see this card, they really hone in and focus on mono green, which I think is honestly the correct you know way to play this card. It was built for like a, a mono green deck. You know, speaking of the fact that it has three devotion to green, uh, but I, I I can't just play things the way I you know they're meant to be played. I have to I have to do something weird. You know, I had to do something weird. So of course, Defiler made a lot of sense in this deck too because they kind of have the same sort of mechanic where something comes in, we get some benefits off of it. Um, so we went ahead and threw that in there, and those two cards were kind of the starting point of this deck. Uh, from there, I had the idea of obviously trying to get one for playing one so I, I looked up all the other creatures that i could that uh you know gave us some sort of benefit when another permanent enters the battlefield so we landed of course on torrens you know beast caller uh cemetery protector all these things were starting to add up where i'm like okay we're getting creatures every time another creature hits the field and we're seeing this like really really cool uh loop starting to happen here so from there i'm gonna be honest with you guys we landed in bant because I initially had a, uh, what was it? The Broker's Ascendancy in the deck. Um, and that's where the blue kind of came in and started off uh, for us. And uh, it, w it turned out to be a little bit more of a win more card that was really hard to, to get down because we really wanted to keep this tempo going uh, constantly of creatures dropping. And that card didn't exactly play into the game plan perfectly. So uh, we ended up cutting it down the road. Uh, we still had, you know, Falco in the deck and the Broker's Charm, which both originally were in the deck as well. Um, so I, I kept it with Bant, um, but Broker's Charm made a lot of sense to me, in my opinion. If there's a way you guys can maybe squeeze that in here, um, it does play pretty well with the idea of, you know, going wide and then pumping the team up as you go. Um, but we did, we did cut it for now. Um, let me know what you guys end up doing, obviously in the comments down below, if you end up putting that back in or not. But I thought Falco made sense to stay in the deck because Falco plays off the one, one counter stuff. And we have a bunch of creatures constantly training, obviously the beast caller and Gala also getting one, one counters as well as the defiler giving counter. So there's this never ending one, one counters thing happening where Falco still makes a lot of sense. Cause you can add, you know, card advantage by drawing off the top your deck and then broker's charm was just too good because it acts as removal you know card advantage it does a lot of things for us so um i had to keep this in as well and then uh from there i i knew i had to have the kodama because kodama obviously plays off modified creatures which everything is and we have the two best you know two drops you can ask for for kodama because you know gala gets the two count or the one counter on it beast caller gets a counter on it the moment that kodama hits the field uh, immediately ramping us into you know a potential turn five play so um it's a really good card to have in the deck i think that one you know made a lot of sense uh, a late addition we had here was a johnny uh we tried out wandering emperor and things like that but i think a johnny makes a lot more sense because of the one one counters and vigilance that you can give your creatures it helps a lot with the game plan and also the plus on the ajani here so good there's almost no situation other than the charm and land that you're not going to draw some sort of card off of this so 
it makes a lot of sense to have in the deck also splashed in two titans just to kind of uh you know go over the top and win the game that might be the card i would say you know maybe cut the two titans and then just throw in a broker's charm um i'm sorry broker's ascendancy and maybe you got yourself uh you know an ascendancy back in the deck but uh titan is just another you know go over the top and try to win the game with that um but yeah guys deck was a lot of fun thought it worked really well um obviously for what it was trying to accomplish which is to get creatures down create more creatures go wide one one counters boom hit their face try to win the game um, and again it got me to diamond pretty easily i obviously think this deck could use a little bit of tweaking a little bit but uh for the most part pretty strong and uh i really did enjoy it a lot so i hope you do as well um that will conclude today's breakdown and video but before i get out of here as always guys got to give a huge shout out to the marty mob um the marty mob if you guys don't know is the membership program here on the channel and these people that you're seeing on the screen now help support the channel through their monthly memberships and i got to give a huge shout out at the end of every video to them because i gotta let them know just how much i appreciate them for everything they do and uh the support has been unreal so I just got to say and express every every single video how much I do appreciate them for helping me, you know, move forward in this channel's growth and, uh, you know, the future of, of what this channel can be is thanks to these people. So much appreciated and uh, much appreciate you for watching this long again. So uh, we'll see you guys on the next video and uh, till next time, guys. Yeah, yeah. Peace. Hit him three times like a hat trick. Yeah. The name is says you know Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic, yeah, that's magic. Yeah. Ooh. MTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Uh. Man, all of the time. Coming with the best decks, but the meta. This ain't cheap, yes.